Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. I don't know. Do you think LeBron James could be uh, <laughs> the first uh, the first ever player GM? Well, he kind of is already. No, I know he is. He is the de facto, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it's like, it's just weird. Like, look, you know, I hate the Lakers. Like, I'm not a Lakers guy. I can't stand them, and I'm happy to see trouble in Lakerland. But like, they, they, they suck. You're listening to the Skip and Josh podcast with Skip Sherman and Josh Obadia. I'm Josh in Toronto. And I'm Skip in Montreal. In today's episode, Bat Flips, A Cursed Franchise, and Video Review. But first, the NHL playoffs. Okay, Skip, it's uh, Sunday, April 21st in the morning. We're recording um, the day of Game 6, Leafs Bruins, which is happening Mm -hmm. this afternoon. Yeah, Um, this afternoon. Yes, yes. It's, of course, a day game because of NBC. Um, I think that a lot of Leafs fans are nervous, even though they have the lead in the series, because I think a lot of Leafs fans are worried that if they lose game six and it goes to game seven against the Boston Bruins, they're going to lose again. I think a lot of them are worried about that legitimately. Is that the feeling you get in Toronto? Yeah. Like from your Leaf fan friends? Yeah, yeah, they're all nervous. They've all been nervous throughout the entire series. Because, wow. I mean, they haven't advanced to the second round in about 15 years, right? So right, right. So this is a huge deal for them. Anyway, that series has actually been one of the better ones because it's actually still going on. Uh, a lot of the others have been quite lopsided. I have to tell you that I made, uh, I, I joined this office pool where you have to pick who's going to win each round. Right. Um, you know, like a bracket challenge, but for hockey. Yeah. And so far, there's four series that are completed and I'm, right. I'm 0 for 4. Well, I mean, no one could have predicted Columbus over Tampa. That's just, you know, the unthinkable. I mean, yeah, we've seen one versus, we've seen eight beat ones. This has happened, you know, many times. It's not like the sky is falling, but like four straight, that's just obscene. And Calgary's also a one that lost. And Calgary, Calgary's out also. And like Colorado kind of limped into the playoffs, right? And just but you 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 were never high on Calgary although still it's 8 versus 1 is still a big deal although you, you were always skeptical of Calgary's goaltending but in the end their goaltending was was okay it was good yeah like, i mean Mike except Smith for the last them, game yeah but Cal- colorado just played better and won the close games right because there's a couple games in overtime there right yes there were yeah i mean it's really i don't understand anything obviously no one should ever um take my picks and use them to wager. Yeah, no, that's that's for sure, right? I actually did say to somebody um, when I handed in my, my office pool picks to the guy running the pool, I said, uh, here are my picks. If you want to win, do the opposite. Right. And, and literally, had he listened to me, he'd be in first place right now. Okay, so that reminds me of two things, okay? Number one, we did an episode probably exactly a year ago. Around this time a year ago, mm-hmm. where and and I, I'd have to look back, but either the episode was called "Nobody Knows Anything" or we mentioned that like literally nobody knows anything, and it had to do with the Vegas Golden Knights, right? Because you know they last year they you know they were first place they for a long time, and people were waiting for the other shoe to drop, and it never happened. And then the playoffs started, and people were waiting for them to lose, and it never happened. And then they kept advancing, advancing, advancing all the way to the end, and they almost pulled off the biggest miracle ever. But like, if if Vegas, an expansion franchise, <laughs> can make it to the Stanley Cup Finals last year, then nobody should be surprised about any of the results in this thing. And not not that not that just. Not that nobody should be surprised, but that nobody should pay attention to what the so-called experts, in quotation marks, say. Because clearly, the experts know as much as anybody else on the street, you know? Like, it's just, like, it kind of boggles the mind, you know? Like, there's there's too much unpredictability in the NHL playoffs that it's, if you're betting on it, you're on crack, you know, honestly. Like, it's just a way to, you might as well burn the money and tear it up. Right. The other thing you should not pay attention to is the yeah. regular season statistics, because oh. whether you finished with the most points or the least points, whether yeah. you ended the season on a hot streak or or on a cold streak, yeah. none of that matters because literally the playoffs are a completely different season. And as soon as the playoffs begin, everything changes. First of all, everyone's back to zero, number one. And, yeah. and number two, as we've alluded to on this show many times, 
the referees officiate in a different way. And it's a different game. And the skill teams that have a lot of offensive power and, and maybe aren't as gritty, um, those teams, Gritty. yeah, that's the Flyers' mascot. Yes, I know, I know. I did that was <laughs> unintentional. Um, those teams are at a disadvantage when the playoffs begin. Yeah, you you need the, you need to score goals in different ways in the playoffs. So, like, obviously, you still need to be skilled, you know, to, to score goals even in the playoffs. I mean, you need to have skilled players, but you need to score goals in a little bit different ways, and it's like. I'm using the cliched words. You got to go in the danger areas. There's lots of deflections. There's lots of scrambles in front of the net. All kinds of stuff like that, right? There's less power plays, right? There's just less power plays. So if you're relying on scoring one power play goal game, you know, forget that. Now, the second thing I wanted to say, because I said I had two things that reminded me about your picks that were no good. Mm -hmm. That reminds me of like 89, 90, 91. We're in like some kind of big uh, college basketball uh, pool. Yeah. (laughs) Draft. It was like a draft, and uh, as soon as the picks were finished and everybody had their team, one person in our in our in our draft, Benji, declared, "I hate my team. I'll trade my whole team for anybody else's right now." Yeah, <laughs> so I can recall you imagine, that. Imagine it was high stakes. We spent some serious cash to enter that thing. Yeah, and then it's, and then an hour after everybody makes their selections, he's like, "I'll trade mine for anybody else's." <laughs> So, That's how confident he was. So you mentioned that there were high stakes in that. That they still do that pool. I know the, much higher stakes than I was we just going to say. The stakes have multiplied by ten from what they were when we were in it. Because we kept doing it for a few years, and then at a certain point, I was like, "No, I can't do this anymore. This is way too much." Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I wrote down some notes as I was watching some of the hockey games. Um, yeah. Some things that just were interesting to me or, you know, highlights that I wanted to, to mention. Sure. Go for it. So first of all, um, Jordan Eberle is playing like he did in the 2009 world junior hockey championships in Ottawa, which by the way, you and I and Matthew were at. Yeah. Um, he's, he's rejuvenated. It's like, he's like, he's a new man or something because he's carrying that team. I mean, yes, they've got production from other players, and of course, they've had good goaltending from Robin Leonard. But uh, it's it's really interesting to see Jordan Eberle playing the way everyone thought he could play all these years. I don't know yeah. if he was stifled in Edmonton or what the story was, but um, I'm happy to see that he's playing well. In Edmonton, he was always kind of the forgotten man because they always they always had like another big first round pick ahead of him, whether it be Taylor Hall or now McDavid or or even you know they had uh, what's his name um, Nugent Hopkins. You know he was never the the guy that they thought, oh my god, he's going to change our franchise, even though he's a great player. And then when he came to the Islanders, like the the reality is this year the Islanders are just not a high scoring team, right? Right. But in it seems like every time they scored a goal against the Penguins in the playoffs, it was Eberle. <laughs> Right, which is great to see, and I mean, my son is thrilled, and 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 he's kind of adopted the Islanders as like his team because he loves Everly, you know. Anybody who watched Team Canada, those not just that year when they won the gold, where he scored that miracle goal in the semis against Russia, but people forget the year after, even though Canada didn't win the gold, he scored a crazy amount of goals, also overtimes and third period goals too, you know. Your son would actually like the Islanders even more if Yaroslav Halak was still on the team. Well, he's he wants the Bruins to use him. Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Yeah. Another player uh, in these playoffs who has been a superstar. I mean, and we've known he's a superstar, but really it's starting to show for real because I don't know that he's ever done anything in the playoffs before, is Nathan McKinnon. This guy is unreal. Yeah. Well, they did have a run in the playoffs a few years ago. It could be close to five years ago already. And everyone said, oh, my God, McKinnon, McKinnon, he's going to be the greatest, you know, which he really is one of the best players in the league. But the, the reality is Colorado hasn't been in the playoffs since then, right? They just Right, and I don't get like to they, see, I mean, during the regular season, I don't see any Colorado games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're talking about pure skill, he's definitely one of the top five players in the league, I, I would say. And he's playing minutes like a defenseman you know defensemen play 20 something minutes forwards don't usually play you know they usually play less than 20 minutes like 18 minutes is a lot for a forward in any game and he's playing 20 something minutes so i luckily for them they they won in five games so he has time to rest before the next round but if they keep using him for 22 minutes a game and a series goes seven games they don't have you know 
a second or third or fourth line that you can really no. rely on. So they are they are using that first line, him, Landeskog, and Rantanen. Mm. Like they're playing all the time. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like I don't understand how they're going to keep that up, but they're going to try. I mean, you know? and it worked against Calgary. I I don't know if it's going to work in the next round. Right, right. What I'm actually interested to see is a team like um, like the Islanders who swept the Penguins and a team like Columbus who swept Tampa. Was it a case of the Islanders being really good? Was it a case of the Blue Jackets being really good? Or the opponents that they played were just really bad? And I mean, Columbus could go in the next round and they could lose four straight and the Islanders could lose four straight against whoever they play in the next round. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what happens in the next round. Yeah, well, I mean, it looks like it's going to be Washington advancing. Like, they seem to be in a little bit of peril when the series was tied 2-2, but they crushed Carolina last night um, to sort of basically say, like, look, guys, <laughs> get out of here. We're going to win this series, you know? Like, they, they basically, it's like, it, I know it's a cliche, but, like, that was a statement game. And right. then Toronto-Boston, I mean, I, I think Columbus could beat either Toronto or Boston, or I think Toronto and Boston could beat Columbus. It's like, it's flip a coin, you know? No, I want to touch on two things you just said, actually. Um, mm-hmm. You mentioned you mentioned the Carolina series. So the home teams won every game in that series. So it looks like that one could go seven games. But something interesting that happened, I feel like I have like two worlds. Um, I don't know if you feel like you have two worlds. And sometimes your two worlds collide. Well, that was really a stupid thing. <laughs> you know what's going to happen now? Worlds collide. What? Yeah. <laughs> because this world is your sanctuary, and if that world comes in contact... Yes, it blows up! <laughs> so if you know that, what did you tell Elaine for? I didn't know. Kramer told me about the worlds. You couldn't figure out the world's theory for yourself? <laughs> it's just common sense. Anybody knows you gotta keep your worlds apart. And so this happened to me the other day because, you know we obviously follow college basketball and Duke blue devils. And we obviously follow the NHL and hockey um, and the Montreal Canadians. But when I look for news on certain sports, I go to different outlets depending on what I'm looking for. You know, I'm not going to go to TSN to find out about the Duke blue devils, just like I'm not going to go to ESPN to find out about the Montreal Canadians. So the other day um, before the Carolina hurricanes game, Zion Williamson recorded a message to them wishing them good luck in the game. I think it was the game that they won, actually. Um, And I was just surprised to see Zion Williamson having anything to do with hockey because even though I know he lives in Carolina, I think he's from South Carolina and he played his basketball in North Carolina. I didn't even know that he knew what hockey was. Yeah, who knows? But I think the storm surge business that they had going caught a lot of attention, you know? And I think it probably caught up a lot of attention of everybody else covering all the other sports that are much more popular in Carolina, you know? That could be. The other thing I want to mention, because you you talked about the Bruins Leaf series, um, a player who I think is very underrated, I mean, he is an all-star, but I think he's still underrated, is David Pasternak. That, oh, he's amazing. That guy is such a good player. Yeah. Both at all, all, all ends of the ice. Like, yeah. He's like... And the, the fact that they have him and Bergeron and Marchand, now don't get me started, I'm not a fan of Marchand, but like these are all three guys who are complete players, right? Yeah. They're not just they're not just offensive. They can do anything, you know? That would, and Pasternak fit right in, you know? So anyway, that's all I got about uh, the NHL playoffs. I just I feel I I feel good about the Leafs chances to be honest. I mean, look, they have the lead. And I just think they're a deeper team. Boston's really relying on their first line to score all the goals. And and I th- feel like Toronto just is coming at them in too many ways, you know? Maybe it's Marner that's going to score a big goal, or maybe it's Austin Matthews, or maybe it's or maybe they're going to get a goaltender interference call that's not going to be called. I don't know if you saw that. Okay, so <laughs> that definitely should have been goaltender interference. I mean, if there's... What are Leafs fans saying in Toronto? Do people agree, or they they're just they don't care? Um... I haven't really asked any fans since it happened yeah. because I haven't been to work since it happened. But right, but right. even like, you know, all the, as you say, so-called experts on television and on radio and on websites, all of them are saying that it was goalie interference. The only reason I might agree, and, and I don't agree with the call, but the only reason I might agree is because unfortunately the call on the ice was it's a good goal. 
And as you know, if you're going to overturn something, it has to be 100% conclusive. Well, when the guy backs up into the goalie with no one touching him, to me, that's 100% conclusive, no? Um... Although I guess they could say maybe he was lost his balance after the after the Bruins guy kind of touched him, but like God, you know, he he really backed up into the goalie. The other interesting thing is later that night in the Calgary yeah. game, there was a goalie interference uh, challenge yeah. or review or whatever. Yeah, and that one they actually didn't allow the goal. I think right, um, and and it was wasn't even as bad as as the Toronto one which they did allow. The thing is the fans expect that every call because of instant replay in all the sports now. Fans expect everything to be 100% right. Like they expect it that every call is going to be correct. Yeah. But the problem is that goalie interference is still a subjective call. There's no I mean yes there's a rule but someone has to make a judgment call on whether the interference occurred or not. It's not it's not like um in baseball, did he touch the base before the ball got there? Right. That you can physically see. It's not like in football, did the ball cross the line, right? Or or I mean, I I, I don't want to say this, but like was it a catch or not mm. because that's a whole other ball of wax. But I think the NFL is going to run into this same business trouble oh, with for sure. interference as soon as this year starts. And they're starting to say, was it pass interference or was it not pass interference? Because that's still a judgment call about what is interference. Because some refs let things go. Some let refs call it more tight, right? And sometimes the beginning of a game, something's called. And sometimes the end of the game, they let it go. So it's really, it's it's a, it's a very, uh, it's going to be a really contentious, well, I mean, this goalie interference has sucked all year. No one's really known. Ask any goalie in the league. They'll tell you they still don't know what the rule is. And now we're in the playoffs and it costs the Bruins a goal. And we still don't know what the rule is. It's and, even less clear. And last night there was a controversial goal in the Winnipeg series where where Connor Hellebuck thought it was goalie interference, but they allowed the goal. And, right. and I think you're 100% right about the NFL. I think this is the reason why they've never had pass interference as a reviewable thing. Because now yeah. that they have it... You're going to see games are going to take longer for sure, number one. And number yeah. two, you're going to have the same situation where you'll have a pass interference thing in the one o'clock game where they'll call it pass interference. You'll have a yeah. similar play in a four o'clock game where they won't call it. Um, and then fans are going to be confused, as you said. The only difference is, is that it's going to actually cause more controversy because you're going to see it in like ultra, ultra HD and frame by frame, which the ref doesn't get to see on when he's making the call. Right. And then you're going to expect like, oh, but like you're going to expect as a viewer, like, oh, yeah, that's pass interference. But like, of course, fans of the other team are going to see it in a different way. You can two people can watch the same exact thing and see something different. Yeah. You know, I know I have, you know, like I know I when I watch. I'm like, oh, that's definitely a fumble, you know, and then I got my friend sitting next to me. He's like, there's no way that's a fumble. You know, it's like, are we watching the same thing? Of course we are. It's a, that I guess it's the ref's call, but kind of sucks you know can we get back to hockey for a second yes please so you heard that steve eiserman is leaving tampa bay to go work for the detroit red wings and i heard congratulations to mr eiserman the thing is i could swear that i heard this a year ago um of course so and 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 in fact i thought that he was no longer working for tampa bay i thought he just left the lightning about a year ago and so he when, did leave the Lightning, but oh, he still was employed by the Lightning? Well, or I no? don't know. When I heard the news that he went to the Red Wings a few days ago, I heard that it said Iserman leaving Tampa Bay to go work for the Red Wings. But I thought he left Tampa Bay a year ago. Like, I, he's had nothing to do with them for about a year now. That's what I, that's what I thought. No, Julian Brisebois is the GM of Tampa. Maybe Iserman has some kind of position where they're still paying him. Who knows? But, I mean, as everybody said, and then, like, if you listen to, like... Uh, all you have to do is listen to any sports talk. Like this Iserman to, to Detroit was the worst kept secret in hockey. Every single person, everybody knew <laughs> every, anybody who follows the league, like as these insiders all knew that he was going there, hmm. you know? So, well, I mean, anyway. it's a natural fit, right? It's a natural fit. Yeah. He's, he's had success in Tampa. He seems to be a good GM that knows what he's doing. He's, he built a great team in Tampa and the the Red Wings need some new leadership. Why not bring in their their one of their greatest players ever? You know, absolutely. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Can we can we just go back to? There's one series that we couple series that we didn't talk about at all. Okay. Well, Dallas is is leading 
Nashville, and it gives me great pleasure to see Nashville losing because you know, like I've told you since two years that I don't trust Pecorine, and he's just, the guy keeps proving me right all the time. You know, well, I, I don't think it was his fault they lost the last of game. Of course, it's not, but he's not capable of carrying them. That's it's just he's just not. It's like I told you, they have to play a perfect game because yeah. they don't have like an abundance of of scores where they can win a game six four or something like that. Yeah, it's almost they're almost like the Montreal Canadiens in that they have to play a perfect game. They have to have good goaltending. Um, right. But I don't know. We'll see there's what happens. No, there's no margin for error in their games. No, there isn't. Know? I still yeah. think I still think Nashville's a good team. But I did pick one thing I did pick that might still come true is I did pick Vegas to go to the Stanley Cup final again. So we'll see if that happens. Well, that was the other series that I wanted to talk about because Although San Jose has a really good team on paper, boy, oh boy, talk about bad goaltending. Like, he sucks. <laughs> it's not just him, though. I told you before the playoffs started, San Jose, they always have this really great team during the regular season that everyone thinks is going to go to the Stanley Cup final. Yeah. I don't... Have they even won a Stanley Cup? No, they haven't. They made to, they've been to the final they've once. They've been to the final once. And this but... goalie, Martin Jones, took them to the final. So I think that's why... They have like faith in him, but I mean, as as it's it's hard to believe that like hockey people could look at their team and say, and and they have a great team of forwards and defense. Look at their team and say, yeah, Martin Jones is our guy because he's just like God, he sucks. And and the problem is like, do you know who the backup goalie is on San Jose? I could you name don't. it? I didn't. I had to look it up just now to to know his name is Aaron Dell. Oh yeah, I've heard so, of him. So you've heard of him. He okay, sells great. You've heard of him. He must be a player. Yeah, okay. The computer guy, Dell, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wow, we haven't talked about hockey this much in a while. Well, it's the playoffs. And actually I'm not even looking forward to the second round, to be honest with you. First round is so is, well, there could be second round could be good. You know, Islanders caps could be great. If the caps advance, yeah, I want to see that. You know, Bruins or Leafs versus Columbus could be a good series, right? And the West, not so much, but by the way, you mentioned you mentioned how bad the San Jose goaltending has been. You know, I told you this a few years ago. It's not like the, uh, was it the 80s or the 90s where Martin Brodeur and Patrick Waugh were winning all those Stanley Cups, right? Well, both, yeah, yeah. It's it's not like that anymore. You need a good goaltender, but you don't need to have the best goaltender. And look look what's going on now. You've got these no-name goaltenders, like Robin Leonard just swept the Penguins. Um, yeah, Bennington. Right. He No one heard of him before before December 31st. Who's Colorado's goalie? Um, it's Grubauer. Grubauer, who was who was God, like exiled out of Washington. Yeah, and you know, who, and team. you know who Colorado's backup goalie is? It's Simeon who? Varlamov, who was also oh, exiled out of Washington. But Varlamov was supposed to have been their 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 number one, no? Right, like, exactly. Yeah. So but he's too inconsistent. So also. you you got you got all these guys, these I guess retreads who have been on multiple teams, and yeah. and and all like Peter Mrazek on Carolina. Oh, that's just a crazy story. I mean, you know, he he they got him from the Red Wings for a ham sandwich, I think. Did you see that save he made two games ago? He made some crazy save at the end of the game. I, They're calling it the Mur- they called the Mirazic miracle. I actually haven't seen it. <laughs> so I mean, it, it just goes to show you like you you can find a goaltender on the free agent yeah. wire. I mean, you could, you a, could, a few but you teams better have did. a really good team. You better have a really good team in front of him. That's the thing, right? So, anyway. Yeah. All right, well, that's a lot of hockey talk. I told you before we started recording, I was really excited because I wanted to see how you were going to start the show. Uh huh. Because for the last four weeks, we started the, you started the show with college basketball, right? Or maybe five weeks, right? So, so like it's and and all those times where we talked about college basketball, it seemed like obvious, like that's where you were going to start. I kind of knew, but here I wasn't sure where 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 we're going to go first. By the way, actually, I forgot. This isn't in my notes, but thank you for reminding me. Last week, you said on this show that no one was going to watch that gold medal women's hockey game because Canada oh wasn't God. playing in it. But oh guess God. who watched that game? I did. And it was yeah. an exciting game between Finland and USA. There yeah. was a disallowed goal. It went into overtime. Finland should have won. Talk about goalie interference. There's another one. Um, that was awful. That was awful. It was awful. I feel really bad for the fans. But I mean, that's the kind of play that where you look at it, if you're a fan of one team, you're like, that's goalie, that's, shouldn't, the goal shouldn't count. And if you're a fan of the other team, you're like, of course it should, right? It's it's a very gray area about whether that should have been goalie interference or not. 
Anyway, then but it, it just sucks that they let them celebrate for eight minutes, thinking they won the championship, and then they said, "Oh, sorry, you have to play again." Right, you know? and then it went into a shootout, and then they lost in the shootout, unfortunately. But it was it's actually a, a very exciting it's game. All, it sucks to lose the uh, championship like that in a shootout in the first place, and double double suck because you know yeah. they they thought they won already on their home ice. Yet Ugh, ugh the whole thing was the was really like a bit of a debacle, if you ask me. And Canada played in the uh, in the bronze medal game and, and easily won the bronze medal. Yeah, no, that's not a surprise, though, no? No. Although, you never know. They could have just not shown up. I mean, being disappointed about not making it to the final. Major League Baseball. Can we move to baseball? Yes. I have a couple of things. So, okay. I have a couple of things for also. First of all, there was another bat flip in baseball this week. And that's what I wanted to talk about. And this is starting to annoy me. Actually, not starting. It's annoyed me for a while because my my opinion on this whole thing, and I've never played the game professionally, but if you want to flip your bat, flip your bat. I don't really care. Um, I don't think, and there are a lot of those so-called experts, again, I'm putting in air quotes, who say that if you flip your bat, go ahead and flip your bat, but you're going to get hit by a pitcher next at bat. To me, I don't see the equivalent between flipping a bat and hitting a batter with a pitch because hitting a batter with a baseball that you're throwing at 90 miles an hour could could seriously injure that player. Flipping your bat doesn't injure anybody at all. Yeah. It injures your delicate ego. Come on. Get with the times, boys and girls. Or it's just boys, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Like, seriously. Flip your bat. I don't care. I have no issue with what Tim Anderson did. Um, right. It bothered me that Brad Keller hit him. And what it, bothered me the most is when he hit him, they both got ejected. Right. Well, at that point, you don't have a choice. You ha- the the umpire know, has to eject the them both. Rule, that's the stupidest rule ever. So Tim Anderson gets there, he gets hit by gets hit by pitch, and he gets tossed out of the game. And now you know he got suspended for one game, Tim Anderson. He did, but apparently but his suspension is for something he said, not for what he did. They say it was a racially charged word. Right, right. And we're not going to get into that on this show, but... Um, I think that you have to throw them out of the game because as it is, the penalties, the punishments that they're 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 putting on these players aren't enough because they yeah. continue to do it again and again and again. And so yeah. and so Keller got suspended for five games and Anderson got suspended for one game. Big deal. Keller's not even gonna miss a start because he's gonna appeal the suspension pitch when he's supposed to then he's gonna say okay i'll take my suspension he's he's gonna have five days off anyway because he's a starting pitcher and then he's gonna yeah. go back and get his next start but the thing by throwing anderson out of the game you're sending the message that like he can't flip his bat you're right i don't actually think he... i mean indirectly he can't flip his bat because what did he if flipping his bat is perfectly fine as you say mm. Which I don't disagree with, by the way. But if flipping his bat is perfectly fine and he should be allowed to do it, then he got tossed out of the game for flipping his bat and standing in the, and going and having another another at bat against the same pitcher. It's 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 absurd. Well, you know? I think in most cases, not in this one, but in most cases, the batter gets tossed because the batter goes out and tries to fight the pitcher. That's true. There was so, an altercation. So you can't You're right. if there he's going to go fight, then you have to toss him out of the game. But yeah, if, if the, bat, just if not the batter just walked to first yeah. base and didn't do anything, mm-hmm. then no, you should not throw the batter out. Right. Okay, I get it. The, the the I was thinking about this a lot this week. This whole thing, mm. right? It's like, should he be allowed to flip his bat? Shouldn't he be whatever? And I was thinking, like, look, do I agree with him flipping his bat? I really don't care. He could do whatever he wants. Like, would I flip my bat in a in the third inning of a an April baseball game against you know like what was what what why did he flip his bat like it wasn't such a dramatic home run a winning thing it was like a random he he hit a home run you know by the way maybe did you, he's, did maybe you he's see hyped the bat flip? I don't know yeah it was it was well done it was it wasn't even a bat flip he tossed the bat yeah okay yeah. and 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 I'm sure this is not the reason he did it but hear me out on this one he's a left handed batter. And the dugout that they were in was the third base dugout. Right. So right. maybe, maybe, just hear me out for a minute. Rather than ha- like drop the bat and have the bat boy come all the way out and get it, maybe he was just <laughs> tossing it to the bat boy so the bat yeah. boy would have less distance to walk to get it. It didn't look like that on the replay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, like had he been in the first base dugout that game, I bet you he wouldn't have done that. So I was thinking about like... W- 
what, what, why is he flipping his bat like in the first third inning of a, an April game? Like, what's the, what's the purpose? You know, like it's that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And then I was thinking about it. And I'm like, no, maybe I'm completely wrong on this because how come in other sports, no one cares, you know, like NFL is the classic example, right? Opening kickoff of a game, opening kickoff of a game, the first play of the game, a guy makes a tackle. Guy tackles the kickoff returner at the 15-yard line. What happens? He jumps up. He starts pumping his chest, jumping around. They're going crazy. You know, like a special teams are all jumping on each other. Like, this happens all the time. How come in the NFL, no one loves, like, no one says to that guy, you just made a tackle. Next time you're on the field, I'm going to knock your head off. You know, like, that doesn't happen, you know? Or, and then, and then the very next play, literally, so, so the very, very next play. The quarterback goes back for a pass. This is the first quarter of a meaningless game in, in October, you know? And the quarterback goes back for a pass. He gets sacked. What happens? The defensive end goes crazy. does a dance. They do all kinds of stuff, right? Like, this is normal. This is normal behavior to be excited about making a good play. So, I don't see why, you know, like, pitchers take offense if bat batters flip their bats. They're excited. They hit a home run. How come pitchers are allowed to pump their fist when they strike someone out? Yeah, I'm okay with it. How come batters don't take offense to that? Maybe they should charge the mound when they pump their fist. So, by the way, I need to correct myself. Tim Anderson's actually a right-handed batter, not a left-handed okay. batter. Ah, uh, your whole thing's gone. Your whole thing's mute. mute no, but still, his dugout, he was in the third was base the dugout. Side. So, rather yeah. than, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. He just tossed it to the bat. So, board. like, and you know, like, you talked about it, and you didn't mention it today, but, like, the MLB has this whole new ad campaign about, like, let them play. Let the kids Meaning, play. Meaning, like. Let them be themselves. Let them show their personality. That's like one of the big complaints about the NF, uh, MLB is that like it's a little bit too boring. It doesn't appeal to all the younger kids who who they want to get as fans, right? So let them play is like their their new thing. So like, well, let him flip his bat, you know? Did you see, by the way, the MLB Twitter account after Tim Anderson flipped his bat, the MLB yeah. Twitter account said, just be yourself. Keep doing what you're doing. Like they had no issue with the bat flip. So maybe maybe it's like we're looking at it a little bit wrong. Maybe it's it's a long term thing. Like if this ad campaign just started and the MLB is tweeting saying it's okay, maybe it's gonna take a while for pitchers to stop having such delicate egos and being offended by the bat flips. You know, maybe it's gonna take a little while, and and maybe the new managers are gonna come in because now you know the managers are getting younger and younger. Maybe maybe some of the managers are not gonna be so old school and we're like you better plunk them. I hope so. By the way, that's the thing we didn't even talk about. That was a tie game. And Keller's yeah. putting a runner on first base in a tie game. Like, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to help the other team win the game? Yeah. I mean, I think Stupid. Kansas City ended up winning that game, but still. Yeah. Like, why would you just give up a free base? I don't know. It's the code, Josh. It's the code. Yeah. So, yeah. sticking with baseball, yeah. but a less controversial topic. I don't know if you've noticed how many star players have gotten injured this season. I'm, well, I mean, they're all on the Yankees. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to read a list to you. First, <laughs> like the Yankees have like seven guys injured. First, I'll read you just Yankees players on the DL. Then I'm going to read you other all-stars that are on the DL. Uh -huh. okay. So the Yankees, Didi Gregorius, Luis Severino, Miguel Andujar, Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge, Dellen Betances, Greg Bird, Aaron Hicks, Gary Sanchez. That's just the Yankees. That's a roster. Then you've got other players not on the Yankees. Daniel Murphy, Trey Turner, John Lester, Nathan Eovaldi, Mike Clevenger, Jacob deGrom. But the most interesting, the two most interesting injuries this year, um, Blake Snell fractured his toe after yeah. getting out of the shower. And apparently, like, he tried to move some heavy piece of, I don't know what, a lamp or I don't know what he had in, in the bathroom. And it I fell on his toe and it broke his toe. I read the whole story, and to me, it's, like, made up. It has to be. Like, I, there's no way that, like, like, I was reading this. I was like, did they make this up to cover up? Did they concoct some kind of elaborate story so that, like, they 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 couldn't say the real reason how he broke his toe? I, like, I was it, thinking exactly the same thing because so it, sounds, it sounds too far-fetched to me. Yeah, but but a lot of if it is a story concocted, mm. a lot of thought went into the uh, weird details. A, a lot, yes. It's <laughs> yes. almost like a George Costanza thing. It's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. The, the other injury, and this one's not a laughing matter, but very interesting. 
Brock Holt has a scratched cornea, which he sustained while playing with his kid. Yeah, I heard about that. So, again, that one also sounds not as far-fetched as the first one, but still. I could see how that could happen, because it's like accidents could happen. Your kid could scratch your eye. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. Um, And still with baseball, but off the topic of injuries, um, you know that uh, this past Monday was Jackie Robinson Day, which also was Mm -hmm. your birthday, by the way. That was the day of the bat flip, wasn't it? Mm, I don't know if the bat flip was Monday or Tuesday, but... Okay. And also tax day in the United States. But um, so there were only, I think, there were 10 teams that actually did not play on Monday and they celebrated Jackie Robinson Day the following day. And that's Mm. because for as long as I've been following baseball, Monday has always been a day where there aren't that many games because a lot of teams travel from where they were on Sunday to where they're going on Tuesday. Yeah, that's true. So just a scheduling thing, like because... Jackie Robinson Day happened to fall on a Monday this year. Not every team played. Not the end of the world. However, David Price seems to think that Major League Baseball is racist because they didn't put every single team playing on April 15th. David Price is a very good pitcher, but David Price knows nothing about scheduling. And scheduling is a very difficult thing. It's almost as difficult as throwing a baseball 95 miles an hour. And so he should leave the scheduling to the professionals and just focus on pitching. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> they're racist, right? Yeah, okay, they're racist. I don't there know. I don't know if thing. he. I don't know if he used the word racist, but he was very every angry player, that there were ten every, teams that didn't play on Jackie you know, Robinson Day. That's the way it is. You know, every player wears number forty two is retired on every team. Mm-hmm. Every player wears forty two on Jackie Robinson Day. Like, like they're celebrating the history of Jackie Robinson and everything. You know, like this has been going on for years. You know, so th- the fact that you know only ten teams played this year, it happens. You know, what are you gonna do? And by the way, the ten teams that didn't play on the fifteenth, they right. all wore number forty two on the sixteenth. So therefore, mm-hmm. you're having the celebration last for forty eight hours instead of twenty four hours. So that's this actually is, a good thing. This is David Price just being David Price. Yeah, he's an idiot. Yes, but he's I like a decent to, pitcher, I, but he's an idiot. I like to call out idiots because it's not the first time he just talks nonsense. You know, no, it's not. Anytime you put a mic in front of his face, the weather, the, the 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 reporters love to interview him because anytime they put a mic in front of his qua- face, you don't know what kind of story he's going to give you. You know? No, you don't. So I sent you an interesting article this week. Um, who killed the Nationals? The mur- the n- new murder mystery reveals the origin of the team's curse. So it's an interesting article because they really delve into the history of the franchise, not just since they've been in Washington, but what, you know, as they go all the way back to 1969 when the this Nationals franchise was the Expos franchise. And... Um, they, they talk about Blue Monday as being maybe one of the origins and stuff like this. But like, as soon as I read this article, <laughs> it was like, wow, October 14th, 2017, we released an episode, um, about the baseball playoffs going on at the time. It was the Cubs and the Dodgers and the Yankees and the Astros playing. And, um, you declared that the Nationals franchise was cursed, but not because of any thing that happened in a game, but the fact that because they stole the team. Mm-hmm. Yes, right? I do recall that's saying that. That's the origin of their curse. Yeah, that's the origin of the curse. You know, when you steal someone else's team, that's, that's um, what's the expression? That's bad juju. <laughs> it's ill-gotten gains. <laughs> it's ill-gotten gains, exactly. Yeah. So if you want to look no further than, you know, where where you got that team from. Now, the the franchise may have been cursed even before Washington stole the team from Montreal. Yes, but uh, but I I am interested. The the this author wrote a book. Da- yeah. David Bledsoe is the author's name, and I think that David Bledsoe should give me some credits in the notes of the book because mm. I said this almost two years ago. Right. That the, the franchise is cursed because they've had a stacked roster for years and they've never won a playoff series. And they lost some crazy games that they should have won. Yes. Yeah. But it is interesting. I, I don't know if you mentioned this a minute ago, he was um, commenting on how the year that they brought in Max Scherzer in release in relief yeah, and yeah. some crazy stuff happened in that game. I'm not going to get into it. He didn't even give up a hit and yet they lost the game. Right. And this reminded him of, you know, when the Expos brought Steve Rogers into a game instead of Jeff Reardon, who I guess was tired or injured or whatever. And of yeah. course, Steve Rogers, um, that's blue Monday. So, um, yeah, 
So just enough said. Just very interesting uh, the similarities between the two games. Yeah, yeah, I know. I I, I mean the article is really a teaser for the book. Yeah, they're trying to tell you like if you really want to find the origin of the curse, go read the book. Exactly. So maybe now I have to. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you do. <laughs> yeah. Before we sign off, remember, you can listen and subscribe to new and archived episodes of the Skip and Josh podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and of course, Spotify. If you listen to the show through Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review. We would love to hear from you via email, skipandjoshshow at gmail.com, via Twitter at Skip and Josh, or by liking and following our Facebook page. As always, you can get all the links to everything I just talked about on our website, skipandjosh.com. We leave you with this. So, Josh, you know I'm a huge um, soccer fan, right? Yes. And you've heard of Harry Kane, right? Yes. So, like, he's a big striker for England in the World Cup, and he's been one of the top scorers in the Premier League maybe the last four years. He's always at the top of the scoring uh, leaders. So an article came out a couple of weeks ago. I had this in my back pocket, you know, until we needed it for the show. Um, <laughs> there's an article saying that when he finishes playing soccer, he wants to play in the NFL. Can he even catch a football? No, he wants to be a field goal kicker. Ah, okay. <laughs> I, there have been a few players like in other sports who think that they can kick field goals in the NFL, but I don't think any of them have ever panned out. No, I know. It's interesting. I would love to see it. I mean, clearly he knows how to kick. I mean, all, all the players in, that play soccer can kick the ball like crazy, but it's different kicking a field goal with a with an oddly shaped, I don't know, what what would you call the shape of a football? Oblong? <laughs> Sounds good to me. I think it's oblong. <laughs> yeah, with that weirdly shaped football, you know, so. But, but in the article, he says he's really serious about it, and he really would like to try. So, I mean, I hope we see it happen. Yeah, I mean, the shape of the ball is different, but also... Um... It's a different technique. You don't have you don't have these big guys running at you as you're trying to kick in soccer yeah. like you do in football. That's true. And you don't have you don't have coaches icing the kicker in soccer. Yeah. But apparently, because a couple of years ago he came to the New York Giants training camp in the summer, and he hung out with like Odell Beckham and stuff, and apparently he kicked some field goals, and he was like, "Oh, I think I could do this." All right. <laughs> so, well, good luck to him, right? I hope he plays on your favorite team. Well, we'll find out. I would love, I would love, I would love to see him in the NFL. It would be great. So, um, I didn't listen to, this is the first time I didn't listen to the Tony Kornheiser show on Monday because there was a topic I did not want to hear about or, or talk about. And we're not going to, we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it, but, <laughs> but I, I missed something that happened on that episode and maybe you can enlighten me, mm-hmm. but you may have to bring up this topic. So maybe you shouldn't enlighten me. Apparently Mike Wilbon tweeted something that a lot of people are very angry about and wanted to apologize for. Did you hear about this? Do you know anything about no. it? No. Okay. What is it? What did he tweet? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to look it up. All right. I mean, I, I stopped following Wilbon on Twitter. Oh, I never follow too, Because he's much too annoying and he's always tweeting the same nonsense. But yeah, I'll find out. Okay. okay we're going to give that to the crack research staff and uh, next episode we'll, we'll re revisit that i wanted to tell you that the podcast that you recommended uh michael lewis Mm -hmm. podcast it's called against the rules Mm -hmm. i gave it another shot i gave it another listen and i did enjoy um the i did enjoy the the i listened to two episodes i liked them especially the last one like did you you listen to the last one it's called the alex kogan experience it's all about facebook and the tampering with the politics and it's it was very interesting actually it's funny you bring it up because i liked episode two where he talked that was about, about the uh, the mortgages, correct? Right? Yes. Yeah. And I didn't really like episode three because episode three it was almost like two different episodes. He had the story about you know the the grammar police, which yeah, you and I yeah. are. At one point, I thought like it, I thought like he was there was actually two topics in the show, right? Separately, and that they just didn't talk about one of those topics in the title, right? right. I didn't understand, and then he, then it, then he connects it. Right. Well, how did he connect it? Because he had the grammar police story, and then he had the story about this guy who did all this research and may have affected the outcome of the, of yeah, the election. Yeah, I know. It's because the grammar police led to the introduction of um, that guy, Michael Cogan, I guess. But you're right. It was loosely related. <laughs> so yeah. that, that confused me, actually, that episode. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm going to keep listening to it because I, I think he, has some, he probably has some interesting tour stories to tell, and I like the way he tells them. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's all about the referees. Like, that's what he, that's what his thing is about. It's like the referees in our lives, the people who keep the order and keep the rules, right? Right. Well, and yeah, you've said this on our show before that Jay Billis should be the czar of college basketball. Yeah. Well, yeah, he should. But what, and you know, like I told you, Bill Simmons thinks there should be a, a government position called like the sports czar. Mm-hmm. And this person should decide all the things pertaining to sports. Like it should be the, make all the rulings, mm-hmm. right? So before the NFL can decide that they want to have instant replay, the sports czar has to sign off on it. <laughs> like there's not more important things to Stuff deal Stuff like with. that, you know? Yeah, like there's not more important things. Right, exactly. All right, so next time I think maybe we're going to record in person. Yeah, it sounds like it. Looks like it, yeah. All right, talk to you next week. Okay, bye. Bye.